Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the whole front line. So we'll be starting out in the Donetsk front, where here we hear reports of attacks on Uledar, which is actually very interesting because we haven't been seeing these reports for a while now, and I haven't received any front line updates as to how the map should change. There's no territorial changes. So I'm assuming the Russians still will have some sort of foothold in the Eastern Dacia area and that the Ukrainians still have a foothold here in the southern Dacia area. And then the only information I received from the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense is that the Russian forces are attacking the city. So there's no genuine information as to what's actually happening. So this is all I have. But there's some fighting in Ulerar. Then we see fighting report in Novomirelivka as well as Marinka. In these two areas, the Russian forces are attacking after constant shelling, which allows them to get a better position when attacking. However, the Ukrainian forces are actually using a lot of heavily fortified positions to withstand this shelling, which allows them to then ambush the Russian forces whenever they attack which is why we're seeing little to no progress on the Russian side in these areas. Also, something very interesting to note is the fact that the, both the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense as well as War Council both reported that Russian offensives in the Donetsk region has significantly increased over the past couple of days, which means that the Russian forces are actually using more forces and further attacks in these directions, which allows them to gain these advantages that we have seen them control over the past few days. Moving further on to the south of Avdivka, the Russian forces are here attacking the direction of Nevelske as well as Pervomaiske and Vodiana, as they here are attacking northwards of Vodiana after breaking through their Ukrainian defenses here to the north of Vodiana. They are now open to attack further in the northern direction to Sheverne, which will allow them to start attacking the western side of Evdivka. And then here to Peromaiske and Nevelske directions, the Russian forces are looking to gain, gain control over the village of Nevelske, which will allow them to then uh, flank the Ukrainian positions in Peromaiske. This will allow them to also double envelopment from the Vodiana area as they have advanced quite a bit here in this city to the north, which will allow them to advance from these two directions, doing a double envelopment and allowing the Russian forces to just cut off all the Ukrainian forces within the city itself. Then to the north of Evdivka, the Russian forces here, after taking Vesele, they are now focusing their attacks on Krasnoryvka as well as Kamyanka, as they are trying to gain control of these two villages, as these are the final two villages to the east of Evdivka. After this, they'll have to advance further northwards in the direction of Novo Kalinova and Keramik, or straight westwards in the direction of Stepova and Berdichi, depending on exactly which is more plausible. As we can see these open fields, there is the, the weather conditions aren't ideal right now as there's a lot of rain these days. And then if they manage to actually pass through in the direction of Stepova and Berdichi, then how exactly are going to have supplies and so on. So it's a very risky advanced, so most likely they'll have to go around in the direction of Novokalinova, as these all have roads, which will allow them to push properly through them. Then there's also this rail line here that goes through the north of Evdivka, so they may use that as the advance, similar to what the Wagner PMC are doing, as they are using the rails to the northwest of Bakhmut. And then we can see them advance southwards from that direction and attack in the direction of Stepova and Berdichi. Then we move to the Bakhmut front, and first we have to report on this sudden incident where, according to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense, the Russian forces are physically attacking Oleksandro Shultina. So this is the issue I have with the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense mainly. Not that they say anything of the, or any of the other things, because I don't really usually read them. I only read the part where it says who fights what. And here they say or claim that the Ukrainian forces have repelled a Russian attack on Oleksandro Shultina. So how exactly did the Russian forces move through the mud all of these kilometers to this village rather than going to Bilora and Bilivka? I don't know, but this is what they are reporting. Then at Bakhmut itself, the Russian forces are attacking in the direction of Ivanivske as well as the south of Bakhmut, attacking from across the river line here in Bakhmut. And according to some unconfirmed sources, these are sources I don't usually use, but I will just mention it. There are some deep reconnaissance groups of the Russian, of the Wagner forces who have crossed the river line and have entered the central district of Bakhmut. 
Then to the northwest of Bakhmut, we see that the Russian forces are attacking in the direction of Romove, as well as south of Bohdanivka, as they continue advancing through the rail lines here to the northwest of the city. As for further northwest, the Russian forces are also attacking in the direction of Dubovo Vesilivka, as well as Orihovo Vesilivka, as they attempt to further their control here to the northwest of Bakhmut and try to establish some positions they can defend from in case of Ukrainian counterattack here to the northwest of the city. Then to the north of Soledar, the Russian forces are attacking in the direction of Fedorivka, as well as Vesele, Vyimka, Spirne, and Bilorivka. And this is very interesting because the other offensives are all similar to what we have been seeing. And the Russian forces are attacking the direction of the rail lines that go leads up to YMK, so that one is clear. However, w even War Gonzo admitted that after uh, multiple weeks of fighting, of Russian forces fighting below Rivka, and even uh, Ryber at some point claiming that they completely captured the village, they have now returned to step one, to what they had prior to the offensive. Which shows the intensity of the Ukrainian defenses here in this area. And that is all for the Sivirs front. Then we move on to the, to the Kriminna front, where the Russian forces are attacking the direction of Makivka, as well as Nevsky, where they here are trying to gain control over this western part of Flushenka, southwestern part of Flushenka, which will allow them to get a better defensive position. Now, if we look and zoom in on this part of the front line, we can see here that these forest patches here to the south of Ploshenka are all areas with hilly areas, which will give the Russian forces some dominant heights when they are defending this highway. As well as further westwards, there's this rift here, which gives both sides a high ground. So essentially, the Russian forces want to control this part of the front line, which will allow them a pro-defensive position. And if they can, then they want to control this northern part as well, which will allow them to then advance in the direction of Nevsky, because a straight advance through this rift will be very difficult for them to accomplish. So, at the same time, we see here that this area to the north is also a high ground compared to the south. So the Russian forces will most likely attack in the direction of Makivka, and then southwards in the direction of Nevsky. Then they will hold the river line as a strong flank, and they'll be attacking from the high ground. And if we move to the Bakhmut front, we see here that the Ukrainian position around Oleksandro Shultine is also located in the low ground, which means that in case the Russian forces are actually attacking it, they are doing this large flanking maneuver from the north. Or maybe they are just thinking that the Russian advances westwards is in this direction rather than the direction of Belora or Predishina. Either way, this is actually a very significant village as cutting that off taking control of it would cut off supplies all the way to Bilora and Dulivka here in the east, which will mean that they have fewer supplies to deal with, and it will also open for further attacks westwards, cutting off all the roads leading to Toretsk, which is this significant defensive city here to the southwest, here to the southeast of Konstantinivka. As for the Donetsk front itself, here to the north of Vodiane, we see here that there is generally just flat lands. There are some minor, minor changes in elevation here and there, but essentially it is all flat lands from Vodiane all the way to Orlivka and Lestukshina, which the Russian forces are not interested in. They are interested in Lestukshina, as these are all in the low ground and it will allow them to get a better position around Evdivka. On the contrary, here to the north of the city, we see that there are high ground positions here to the west of the Sele and in the Krasnodivka area which will allow the Ukrainian forces to have the advantage when coming to defense, as the Russian forces will be attacking from positions where they are on the low ground. And that is all for today's update. Thank you for watching and have a great day.